Hello everyone, my name is Benjamin Sliever. I'm a PhD student at the Communication Networks Institute of the TU Dortmund University. Um, my talk is entitled Acting Selfish for the Good of All, Contextual Bandits for Resource Efficient Transmission of Vehicular Sensor Data. The talk is structured as follows. At first, I'm going to motivate a topic with data as the new oil for the automotive industry and what this means for the cellular network and the coexistence within those networks. Then I'm going to present some empirical results for data rate prediction in mobile networks. And I'm going to introduce the term black spots, which refer to geospatially depending uh, uncertainty regions of prediction models. And then I'm going to show our main proposal, which is the black spot aware contextual bandit for opportunistic data transfer. And um, then we will present a real world performance evaluation. And finally, the talk will be concluded. Data has been called the new oil of the automotive industry, and according to a forecast by Intel, the averagely driven autonomous vehicle will generate 4,000 gigabytes of sensor data per day each day. If we have a mobile crowd sensing scenario like this, different cars gather sensor data and use a cellular network connection to transmit this data to an analysis server, this is a great opportunity to improve traffic flow prediction and uh, traffic control. However, for the cellular network infrastructure, it's a tremendous challenge because of the channel dynamics and the coexistence of different resource consuming entities. So here we have a highly dynamic radio environment, so related to the mobility behavior of the mobile UEs, also the buildings and then effects such as shadowing and fast fading. We have packet loss. The mobile devices need to apply power, dynamic power consumption in order to compensate the path loss effects. And in addition, as I said, the medium is a shared radio medium. This means that we have a resource competition between machine time communication devices and the human cell users. In contrast to straightforward approaches for improving the situation through acquiring additional spectrum resources and through construction of uh, additional base stations, a better approach would be to utilize the existing network resources in a more efficient way. And this is what this talk is about. Here you can see a real world trace of the SINR along a vehicular trajectory. And you can see that we have different levels of network quality. So on the one hand, we have the connectivity hotspots where we achieve reliable and fast data transfer and a good intracell coexistence and an overall high resource efficiency. On the other hand, we have also the periods of low network quality, which we call connectivity valleys, where we have to deal with packet loss and retransmissions. And also the UE proactively addresses these challenges through the dynamic adoption of the modulation coding scheme. So this means that it's trading transmission efficiency against reliability, and this results in a low resource efficiency. Typical in machine type communication, we're using fixed intervals, and here you can see a fixed interval of um, 50 seconds, and um, this basically hits all spots of the SNR randomly. So we're having transmissions during high network quality periods and also during low network quality periods. From a resource efficiency point of view, it would be prefer to implement a behavior like this. So extensive utilization of the connectivity hotspots and complete avoidance of transmissions during the low network quality periods. In the following, I'm going to show some approaches to achieve such a behavior for opportunistic data transfer. What you need to keep in mind is that we are sometimes in situations where the, different, uh, the time difference between uh, the connectivity hotspot situations is quite large. So this means this can only be applied for delay tolerant applications and not for safety critical messaging. As groundwork for our proposed novel approach, we consider the channel aware transmission scheme first. Um, hereby the key idea is to buffer acquired sensor data locally until the radio channel conditions are considered uh, sufficient enough for performing a resource efficient data transfer. And this is performed based on SINR measurements. So then based on the measured SINR, a transmission probability uh, is computed, which is uh, divided into three cases. So hereby we first ensure a minimum packet size. So we compare the inter-packet time, so the time which has passed since the last transmission has been performed to a given um, threshold value. The same is for um, the, the upper limit, so this is implemented in order to guarantee a maximum buffering related delay. And if we're within those uh, thresholds, then we compute a transmission probability based on a given um, SINR maximum value and also with regard to the vehicle's mobility here, so on the speed measurements. And then we have two exponents which are used to scale the impact of those two factors. 
And what we then get is an analytical description of the transmission probability based on um, the SINR measurements. And here you can see the behavior for the different exponent values. So if we go for a higher exponent, then we are likely prefer preferring high SINR values here. Um, if we analyze this in the real world, we see that we are achieving some benefits um, in comparison to the periodic approaches. However, if we take a look at the LTE standard, we see that we have different other indicators and SINR isn't even standardized, so it's depending on the um, modal manufacturer, but we have also RSRP, RSRQ, and other indicators. We have also mobility measurements, so the speed of the vehicle, direction of the vehicle, the cell ID maybe. Um, we have application parameters, so this corresponds to the transport layer. So um, here we can consider the packet size of the data uh, packet which shall be transmitted. And therefore, our key idea was to bring them all together in a machine learning based prediction model and um, yeah, see if we can achieve some benefits here. For this purpose, we performed a large-scale data acquisition campaign in the real world network. So we had a mobile UE within the car and uh, which executed an Android application which generated sensor data. This data was then transferred in the uplink direction through the cellular network to an application server. In addition, we also downloaded data from the application server back to the mobile device and we continuously captured network quality indicators based on downlink uh, sensing. The goal was to derive an end-to-end -end prediction model for the achievable data rate based on these context indicators. And here we have context indicators from the network quality domain, from the mobility domain, also from the application domain. Uh, we did this in four different scenarios, so a campus scenario, urban scenario, suburban scenarios and highway scenarios, where we drove each scenario 10 times. And uh, this was performed in the public cellular networks of three German MNOs and also resulted in the provision of an open data set. For the data rate prediction, we then compared the performance of different machine learning models like artificial neural networks, um, simple tree-based approaches like the M5, also more complex methods like the random forest, and also support vector machines. Uh, for completeness, it's remarked that this is a linear SVM. Uh, we also tested more complex variants like RBF kernel SVMs, but they didn't increase the prediction accuracy. The prediction then uses features from the network context domain, the mobility domain, also from the application domain. Some of those features are standardized, like the RSRP and RSRQ. Some depend on the modern manufacturer, like the SINR and CQI. And um, it's important that we also integrate the payload size of the to be transmitted data packet. We then wanted to find out a single model variant and model configuration for the further usage within the opportunistic data transmission methods. And for this purpose, we tested a lot of different variants using the limits framework, which allows us to automize machine learning tasks and also to export C++ code of trained models. And here you can see then the prediction accuracy of the prediction models for the different mobile network operators. And it's obvious in our case that the random forest prediction model yields the best performance in all variants. So we choose the random forest. Um, for the data granularity here, we have a trade-off between the grade of locality. So this means um, training a lot of different variants like a single prediction model per ENOB or a more global view. So this means that we could benefit from the data aggregation within a single data set. And here we can also see that in our cases, the global data sets were always the best ones. So this means that we are training a single prediction model per MNO and transmission direction. And here's a short recap about how random forests work. So those models are ensemble methods. So this means we're using the output of different individual models. And if we now zoom into one of those trees here, we see that within each uh, level, we consider one feature and then do a comparison to a threshold value. And depending on the result, we go for the one path or for the other path. Finally, in the leaves of the tree, we have the prediction results. And then we get the average result um, as the overall regression result of the random forest. And although you can only see nine trees here uh, in our final model, we used 100 trees in a maximum depth of 15. We now take a closer look at the geospatial behavior of the prediction model. Here you can see a map of the evaluation scenario and an overlay which shows a radio environmental map. Um, 
which aggregates all data transmissions and shows the root mean squared error per cell where each cell spans 100 square meters. If we now generate a virtual drive test through this uh, radio environmental map, we get a behavior like this. So here we can see that in comparison to the overall RMSE, which is typically used um, to assess the prediction model on the overall data set, we see that we have quite large deviations, so even exceeding the doubled value of the average uh, RMSE in some situations. You can also see that these uh, spots can be aggregated geospatially. And now our key idea for this work is to aggregate knowledge about these prediction accuracy to further improve the data rate prediction and to optimize the opportunistic data transfer process. Those regions of high prediction uncertainty are referred to as black spot regions in the following. And in order to determine those regions from a given a priori data set, we apply a stepwise process. So we use an unsupervised learning mechanism here, the k-means algorithm, to cluster our road measurements into a um, limited set of clusters. And then for each cluster, we compute this cluster-wise RMSE. And based on a threshold decision, um, we see if the cluster-wise RMSE exceeds the average RMSE. And um, if that is the case, then we refer to those regions as black spots. And in order to allow the easy online detection, if a vehicle is within a black spot region, we fit our clusters finally here uh, to ellipses. So then we can just do an ellipse check. And uh, as a result, we then see that we can improve the prediction model of the overall prediction model. So this is the data set which uses all measurements. So the non-black spot data and the black spot data. And if we remove the black spot data now from our data set, we see that we can improve the prediction process so we achieve a better fitting and also a smaller confidence region of the predictions. However, the cost is that we reduce the amounts of um, trans transmission opportunities because we avoid transmissions during those black spot regions. However, we can control the trade-off between improvement and cost here based on the threshold value RMZ max. And in the following, we will assume an RMZ max value of 3. And now we have all components ready, which shall be used in our novel proposed um, data transmission scheme, which is co uh, called Blackspot Aware Contextual Bandit. So we take our data rate prediction block here. We have the different context domains and the context features, and they are brought together in a random forest prediction model, which gives us an estimate for the achievable data rate. Then we have our novel reinforcement learning based data transmission scheme. And for this purpose, we use a contextual bandit. Um, I'm skipping most of the math here, but um, the contextual bandit has two arms, and those correspond to the possible actions. So idle means that we are delaying the current data transfer and we buffer the acquired data in a local buffer. TX means that we are transmitting the whole buffer. Um, however, for the reinforcement learning, we need reward functions for the possible actions. And here we have a reward function for the transmission action and also for the idle action. And we can see here that we have a trade-off between um, increasing the buffering delay and uh, transmitting the data immediately. So this is controlled using the trade-off factor W. And for the data rate optimization, um, we define a target data rate. And from the data uh, set, we know the maximum data set which has occurred in the data set. And um, then our reward function tries to approach this uh, target data rate. And for the age of information, which corresponds to the buffering delay, here we want to minimize these, uh, this aspect. For the idle action, we don't have an immediate reward because if we don't transmit data, there is no um, measurable data rate. However, um, we introduce a punishment factor if we exceed a given um, AOI deadline. And then our reinforcement learning based data rate um, data transmission model uh, makes a prediction and gives us a possible action then. However, we're doing a final check if the vehicle is in the black spot region. If this is the case, then we are delaying our transmission anyway. If that's not the case, we're executing the action. For the parameter optimization, we use the data-driven network simulation method. So this is a novel approach for simulating the end-to-end -end behavior of mobile communications, which relies on a combination of different machine learning models and 
it uses empirically acquired context traces to derive a statistical model of the end-to-end -end behavior of a data transmission scheme. And here you can see the convergence results for the proposed um, black spot aware contextual bandit method. So we see that we are early exceeding the performance of the periodic approach. And then uh, we have some peaks which lower the average data rate. So those are related to special situations in the context trace. However, after 200 epochs, we are reliably outperforming um, those situations as well. And then um, the behavior stays at this level. For completeness, it's remarked that we simulated in total 2,400 um, different training epochs and um, there was no further change. What we also analyzed was the trade-off between age of information optimization and data rate optimization. So for this purpose here, we defined two efficiency indicators. Um, the data rate efficiency is defined as the average data rate over the defined target data rate. And for the age of information, we consider the margin of the average um, age of information to a given application specific deadline. And what we then can see is that we, when we focus on data rate optimization, we have to pay um, the cost of that we increase the AOI, or in other words, we reduce the AOI in, uh, efficiency. Here you can see some real world results for the transmission efficiency, where we compare a novel approach with existing methods, such as the straightforward approach, which uses a fixed interval, the CAT method, which uses uh, SINR based model, um, animal catch, which uses data rate predictions and a probabilistic model, and um, an early reinforcement learning based variant of the latter, which uses Q learning based decision making. And um, we can see that we are in all cases achieving some benefits in uh, regard to the existing methods and massive improvements in comparison to the periodic approach. So um, we also have a dependence to the MNO specific prediction accuracy. So the highest improvements are achieved in a network of uh, mobile network operator A, where we also had the best um, prediction accuracy. We can also see that the black spot awareness allows to reduce the amount of outliers here. So um, we integrate knowledge about the uncertainty of the prediction model to achieve those improvements. We also took a look at the network efficiency here. So we have the number of resource blocks per megabyte. And here we can see that we are achieving massive improvements um, in all networks, uh, quite uh, the similar values here. So through exploitation of those connectivity hotspots, we can apply a significantly higher modulation and coding scheme and use those for really good and uh, fast tra data transmissions. Here you see some results for the power consumption of the different transmission schemes. And uh, it's quite obvious that we are also achieving some benefits here. So the exploitation of the connectivity hotspots allows the mobile device to apply lower transmission power. And this has a strong impact on the power consumption then. Um, for MNOB here, we see that it behaves quite strange. So um, it shows a really high absolute power consumption level in comparison um, to the other MNOs. And this then can be explained through consideration of the statistical properties of the uh, cell deployments within the evaluation scenario. Here you see a plot of the RSRP um, for the different uh, mobile network operators. And for MNOB, it can be seen that the RSRP is quite low in comparison to the other MNOs. And from literature, we know that the RSRP is really correlated to the uh, transmission power of the mobile device since it's related to the distance between sender and receiver and also is used internally to determine this aspect uh, which is used to compensate the path loss effects. We also took a look at the age of information. So this corresponds to the buffering time and also to the um, time when a sensor data packet was generated and uh, then when it was received. Um, here we see that the more advanced uh, transmission schemes really increase the average age of information. And as I said in the motivation, therefore, this, uh, these transmission schemes are only intended for delay tolerant applications. However, what we also see um, is that we have uh, this trade off factor W and this can be used to scale the impact of the focus on data rate optimization or either age of information optimization.
And now I'm going to conclude my talk. So I presented the Black Spot Aware Contextual Bandit, which is a hybrid machine learning method for opportunistic data transfer in vehicular networks. It uses supervised learning for data rate prediction, unsupervised learning for geospatial clustering of black spot regions, and reinforcement learning for autonomous data transfer. In future work, we are concentrating on context predictive approaches like using radio environmental maps and mobility prediction uh, where we look up the future context then and use this to predict the future data rate along the vehicular trajectory. We're also taking a look at online learning approaches which would allow us to self-adopt to concept drift situations where the interplay between the features and the labels changes significantly and we are also taking a look at multi-MNO approaches um, for compensating the black spot regions. Thank you for your attention. I'm happily looking forward to answering your questions in the Q&A session.